I hope you're excited for a new week of work. I know I'm fired up here as we start a new episode of Chasing Greatness. New week, it's Monday. We always focus on winning at work on Monday. Wednesday, we'll give you some stuff to help you win at home. And then on Friday, I got a new little series we're going to start on um, winning in life. And it's going to it's going to go for a few weeks here. We're going to talk about some of the things that you can do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a little blueprint to help you build the life that you want on Fridays the next few weeks. So that's going to be fun. But today we're talking about uh, winning at work and specifically about teams I don't know if you had a chance. Uh, it's been a couple weeks now, but a week ago, I guess, when Kansas won the National Basketball Championship, the College Basketball Championship, and uh, they did some things as a team that I think were really important. We're going to talk a little bit about their team today. So welcome to Chasing Greatness. Thanks for being with me. I'm, I'm fired up to uh, hang out with you for a few minutes here as we begin a new week. You may be watching on YouTube. If you are, hit that thumbs up. Uh, give us a comment. Love to hear that. If we can help you, got any questions, uh, lay them on us. We'd, we'd love to know what you're thinking about at work and how we can help you. Uh, you may be on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, continue to download those things. We're growing like crazy, and we appreciate all that you're doing to help us do that. Push to, If somebody you know leads a team or they're part of a team, push this along to them today. I think this will be helpful uh, content as they, as they seek to make their teams as good as they can be. I, I'm really passionate about teams. I, I, I go all the way back to when I was maybe five years old. The very first time I got to be a part of a team, it was a T-ball team. We we're playing baseball in my little small town. And uh, my dad was the coach and, you know, it's not a lot of, not a lot of baseball probably going on there, but uh, it was exciting. Uh, when I look back on that, I, I like the free Cokes after the game. Uh, maybe we got a hot dog if we did really well. I, that was kind of fun. We got to go to the concession stand. But there's nothing like a team that's working together. Everybody's trying to accomplish the same thing, and, and, and they're real clear on what their purpose is. And I want us to think about that today. Now, let me go back to this Kansas team. Uh, it was interesting when you heard some of the interviews uh, before and after the game when they, they were thinking about the purpose of their team. They had been talking about that. And I don't know if you saw the game or not. I actually watched the game. I hadn't watched a lot of college basketball this year, but I did get to see the final game. And uh, interestingly enough, Kansas was behind. They're playing North Carolina. Uh, the, the game at halftime was a 15-point game. Uh, they had actually been down 16 points Kansas had in the first half. And they by coming back, this was the largest comeback uh, in the history of the tournament. I think they said they've been playing the tournament 82 years, something like that. And and no team had ever come back from 16 points down. So uh, what what was it that that helped them galvanize to be able to do that? And if you watch the game, the first half was totally different. The way they played strategy, they tried to just pound the ball inside. The second half, they ran crazy and played great defense. And it looked like two different teams. But strategy is important for a team, and it, it'll help you win at work. We'll talk about that later. But – but today, I want us to think about purpose, like what drives a team. And Kansas, uh, interestingly enough, as I said, they had something about their, their purpose that was pretty unique. It wasn't even about their team, or I, I should say it wasn't about this team. It was actually about the 2020 team. They felt like that their program's best team, even after the game, some of them said our best team was in 2020, and they didn't get to play for a championship because of COVID. The tournament got canceled. That's really when when everything kind of fell apart and and uh, the world stopped and the basketball world stopped and all the tournaments got canceled. And that team was was favored to enter the tournament as the best team and go through and possibly win the championship. Again, this team thinks that that team was better than them. And so at the, even the beginning of the year, one of the things they stated, this 22 team, one of the things they stated is we're going to go out and we're going to represent that 20 team. We're going to try our best to go win a championship for them. That's going to be our purpose. Now, that, that's kind of weird in some ways. I mean, you'd think you'd want to go win for yourself. I mean, I, they obviously did want to do that. Now they're champions forever, and they're they're fired up about that. It's probably been a, a good week at, out in Kansas. Um, but I, I will say this. I think the idea of all being all together, and there were a couple guys that were on that 2020 team that didn't get to play for a championship. They're still on this team. Uh, one of their main guys was, was uh, back on that team as well. But just being able to say we're going to galvanize around this common purpose, it, it fueled them and uh, all the way to to the 
top of the mountain, so to speak. So as you think about your team today, if you're going to really try to win at work, and I'm assuming you're a part of some kind of team, you're a part of some kind of group, a department, uh, maybe maybe a section or, or a business unit, or a vertical, whatever, you've got a project your own with a group of people. Um, do you know what the purpose is of your team? So many teams I talk to, they're not real clear on their purpose. They, they would have one if they would sit down and talk about it. But the reality is they don't have clarity on their purpose. There's a difference in having a purpose and having clarity on what that purpose is. It, it's, it's fine to go off on a retreat or to have some kind of annual meeting and you state the purpose or it's in orientation packet, you know, in the packet and you give it to everybody. But if you stick it in a drawer and you never talk about it and you don't revisit that over and over again, that purpose will will be will it might not be forgotten but it, it's just like vision vision leaks they say it'll it's like a you know it's like a you've got a you got a bucket but there's a hole in the bucket and it just keeps leaking out i think the same thing's true for purpose uh, if we're not careful uh, our purpose will become fuzzy to us and i always say if it's fuzzy to the leader it's going to be blurry to the team and so as a leader it's your job to make sure that everybody's clear on what the purpose is now as you think about that um I, I, I would encourage you to go to the people on your team and have this conversation. And you might even, it could be as simple as, as sitting at a table together, passing out index cards and asking every purpose, every person on your team to write down what they believe to be the purpose of the team. And then read those out loud and see if you have alignment. I'm guessing if you've not talked about it, if you've not been strategically uh, or intentionally clarifying that purpose, you're going to get some answers that are not exactly the same. And if you're really going to achieve what, what you're capable of, you're going to need to have alignment on your purpose. So I'll give you a couple of things to think about here to remember. Um, I, I think a, a, a clear purpose it, it or, a, or a, um, a stated purpose, an agreed upon purpose, it clarifies what matters most. If you think about it, our purpose really should push us. It should it should say this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it, and so um, it it is it clarifies what matters most. It sets the priority, so to speak. The second thing is is purpose. Uh, it always creates energy and and enthusiasm. And, and and there's a little bit of a difference here. Energy is this forward momentum mindset. It's it's like we're gonna we're gonna do something because of this purpose. But there's gonna be a level of of excitement if you want to use that word instead of enthusiasm. There's gonna be engagement in that. We're gonna we're gonna do something with with this forward momentum, this forward energy. We're gonna all lean in and we're all gonna be excited about that. And I think if we have a clear purpose and we're and we're all agreed on that, it it is uh it's it's a huge um you know a, alignment tool that you have at your disposal if you can can make sure that purpose is clear. And then and then the, the third thing I'd remind you of is that leaders keep people locked in on the purpose. That's the job of the leader. If you're the leader, it is your responsibility to make sure everybody knows what the purpose is. It's clear. There, it's, there's no ambiguity. Uh, Henry David Thoreau once said, it's not enough to be industrious, so are the ants. What are you industrious about? His point was like, you've got to know what you're trying to do. And if you don't, you'll just have a bunch of activity going on. And I, I say all the time, uh, if, if a team is not aligned on their purpose, they'll confuse activity with accomplishment. The job is not to be busy. That's not the goal. The goal is to pursue results. And one of the best things you can do to create results on your team is, is to clarify the purpose, to make sure everybody's uh, locked in on the purpose. So you might start with just a couple of questions. Uh, that, these are two of my favorite questions. The, the first one is, is why are we a team? Why are we a team? And I, I think that would be a great discussion around your table, just to sit with the people on your team and say, why are we a team? If you're, if you're not all aligned on that, then chances are you're just a group of people who work together, our work group, as we would call it. There's nothing wrong with a work group. There's nothing wrong with having cubicles in the same area. There's nothing wrong with going to the same building or, or even being in the same uh, meeting. That's great. But if there's, a, if there's a, a reason that you have a team, it needs to be stated and everybody needs to understand this is why we're a team. And, and so I think that's a good question. And then the second question, maybe even the more important question, this is maybe my favorite leadership question uh, when, as it relates to, 
to a team, and I got this from uh, a friend of mine. He, he, he asks this all the time. What are we trying to accomplish? What are we trying to accomplish? I love that question. It, when a team can, can have alignment on why they exist as a group and, and even more specifically what they're trying to accomplish, they really do position themselves to win at that point. And if they don't know why they're a group and they don't know what they're trying to accomplish as a group, you're going you're gonna to leave results on the table. So any team you have in your business, in your school, in your university, you may be a sports organization. we got a lot of, a lot of sports teams listen. If you are a, a team and you don't have alignment with all your players, all your team members, or all your employees, depending on your situation, you don't have alignment on why you're a team and what you're trying to accomplish, you're really going to struggle. If you really want to win at work, this purpose thing is a big deal. It, it, it's, it's what leads to the results that we ultimately are trying to pursue as a team. You, you don't have to win the trophy to accomplish your purpose, but you need to know what your purpose is uh, you, 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 or you'll never win. I mean, it really – you get to define winning. What does that look like? And, uh, and if you are a sports team, you probably are trying to win games and save your jobs and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But – are you trying to build men or build character in the women on your team? Are you trying to, to win at all costs? You get to decide, but, but you have to decide. If you don't decide, there'll just be ambiguity and no team, as my friend Mark Miller always says, no team drifts to greatness. It's just not going to happen. And so I want to encourage you to get locked in on what your purpose is. It really is your responsibility as the leader to make sure everybody's on the same page. If you can do that, you can get everybody uh, working together. Your team really can a- achieve some remarkable things. So this is this is a good week to just recalibrate. What what are you trying to accomplish? Why are you a group? And and this is just such a uh, an opportunity for us to to lean into the people around us to to accomplish some great things if we'll do that. So I want to encourage you to to go work on your team this week. Let's get locked in on what our purpose is. Let's clarify that purpose. And, and if we will, I'm convinced we're going to be well on our way to high performance. All right. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, keep keep leading at a high level. Every time leaders do a good job, and every time leaders lead well, everybody benefits. I know you're going to make a great difference this week. Don't underestimate your value as a leader. You really are going to help somebody this week. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to chase greatness yourself, yes. But help somebody else be great. Help the people on your team do something great together and and the results will take care of themselves. All right. Love you guys.